Hi, good morning, and welcome to another episode of Dog Training at the Kitchen Table. Today, I want to talk about an epidemic of dogs being able to destroy toys that are considered indestructible. I am calling it an epidemic because I am asked daily about what toys or chews are considered the best thing for dogs that destroy things. It is becoming concerning to me that so many dogs, everything from your uh, pit bulls or bully type dogs down to your Yorkshire Terriers are destroying things that are considered indestructible and I'm becoming very concerned about this. Why are so many dogs feeling the need to destroy things? So I have two theories and I'm going to talk about the first, the first theory first because I think it's the most accurate and it's the easiest problem to solve. One, I think dogs are destroying things because they're not being truly enriched by the enrichment toys any longer. It's great to stuff a Kong and have one frozen and ready to go so in the morning you can answer emails or in the evening you can um, do homework with the kids or you can prepare meals, whatever it might be. I think it's great that you give them something to interact with. But I believe that these toys are being overused. This idea that enrichment is so important to our dogs is being overused. Now, enrichment is extremely important to, to our dogs and to their mental well-being and to their overall well-being. But enrichment should not always be happening away from you. Um, and I think that that's what's being overused. Everyone wants 500 toys. So they can always give their dog something else so their dog can always occupy themselves. This can lead to a slew of other behavior problems. I mean, just... Think about it for a moment that your dog is always finding entertainment away from you and they're getting to the point that they can destroy these things. So that means that they're making up their own rules to the game. The game should be get a whimsy stick out of the quizzle or get the food out of the Kong, but instead they begin to tear it apart. So they're starting to make up their own rules to the games. Um, and they're starting to problem solve in a way that's considered inappropriate. That is because there's just not enough supervision with these toys. And that, and that means that we're just going, here doggy, take this thing and get away from me. Um, I have the, the fluff and tough. So if you're looking for a strong tough, uh, stuffed toy, the fluff and tough, fluff and tough stuffed toy, so much to say, um, is the way to go. <clears throat> it's, double stitched and the seams are turned inward so dogs really can't grab them and pull them apart. It doesn't mean if a dog wasn't tenacious enough that they couldn't rip it apart, um, but that, that comes back down to supervision and the fact that you gave the toy to your dog to go entertain themselves and you want to know part of that entertainment. Again, that is not a healthy relationship for you and your dog to always be going. And I mean always. Again, sometimes it's necessary. You need to get something done. Woo! A dog just jumped into the camper. Um, you need to get something done and so it's nice to give them something to go chew on and go do on their own. It's nice to give them sort of <laughs> a TV episode or a book to read or scroll through Facebook, right? We have so much forms of entertainment and enrichment and our dogs just don't have much. So it's nice to be providing them a lot of enrichment. It's just a shame that so much of this enrichment is happening away from us and not actually with us. So the Aussie who's sitting next to me She'll grab the ears and she'll begin to like suckle chew on it. At which point I notice, because I'm supervising, I'll give her a chew, like a bone. You obviously need to, to chew on something. And this is not it, right? This is a play toy you can throw it in the air, you can like carry it around, you can play tug of war with it, whatever the case may be. But if you need to like lay down and actually chew and work your jaw, I'm going to give you something appropriate to work your jaw. All right. So my first theory is truly boredom and there's too much enrichment away from you and dogs are making their own decision on how to play the game and how to, and how to use these enrichment activities because they're, they're just away from you too much. My second theory is anxiety. I'm truly concerned about the mental state of a dog who is ripping up a West Pot toy. I mean, these things are like very similar to the Kong. They're a hard rubber, I mean, and, but they're also very thick. So I'm concerned about the mental well-being of a dog who is just sitting here tearing something to shreds that shouldn't be capable of tearing it to shreds. Um, and so if there's an, an underlining anxiety that's leading to this, then that means that we're continually pumping them with enrichment and continually pumping them with an inappropriate expression of their anxiety. 
and in, in a means to enrich their lives. Oh, here's some enrichment activities for your anxious dog, but then they're anxious while they're doing it. We really need to get to the root of that anxiety. I would say it's probably stems still from boredom. The incorrect forms of enrichment for that individual dog. Some dogs would be great with a quizzle or great with a Kong or great with the, the fluff and tough. But if your dog isn't being so great with those things, then you need to be evaluating why and finding the best possible solutions. That might mean going for more walks or walks in general if you don't walk your dog at all. However, I've discussed in other videos that walks are not the end all be all. That's not where exercise stops and that your dog needs their brain to be exercised. So even if you ask your dog to walk at perfect heel on your walk and you're telling them to think about where they need to be on that walk, at some point your dog just gets really good at that. It becomes muscle memory and it's no longer the mental stimulation that it was once before. If you allow your dog to zip and zig and zigzag and sniff, sniffing might be great for one walk, but again, if you go the same route or it happens all the time, it's not nearly as exciting. And it would be like watching the same five reruns of the same five TV shows. Eventually, they'd no longer be too exciting. <clears throat> so giving your dog a different type of exercise. I've talked before um, for breed specific exercises like barn hunt or nose work or um, agility. I mean, the list goes on and on. There's just there's just not an end to how many sports there are to do with your dogs. But I am going to make a different video about various forms of exercise besides walking. So we're not going to talk too much about it here. I just wanted to talk about if your dog is destroying indestructible toys, I want you to ask yourself why. Is it an underlying anxiety? Is it an underlying boredom? And how can you better use your enrichment so that your dog actually gets what they need. Food for thought. Have fun with your best buddies.